Yo! I'm Zach Weiss, and I know so much about Star Wars, it should probably be illegal. This is Lore and Legends. Lore and Legends is a new series where I tell you absolutely everything you ever wanted to know, and stuff you probably never needed to know about a certain Star Wars subject. From the canon to the legends. Stuff like, how long is Sice Noodle Snout? What kind of food does Sice Noodles need to eat with a snout like that? What is the biological function of Sice Noodle Snout? All these burning Star Wars questions and more will be answered on Lore and Legends. This week I'm going to be going over the complete history of the Tusken Raiders, and if you know anything about me, you know I'm probably the world's biggest Tusken Raider fan. Tusken Raiders? You know, you know Where are the Tuskens, Gareth? Gareth? Where are the Tuskens? <laughs> This is Lauren Legends. History is one of the most important parts of Sandperson culture. As they put it, They aren't allowed to speak the stories aloud unless they are exact. Any error is considered a blasphemy punishable by death. In fact, every tribe has a storyteller, someone chosen from birth to tell a history and story of their people. The Sand People believe that the storyteller is the most important member of their society, as they keep no written history of their people, because according to them, that would cheapen their legacy. If a tribe doesn't have a storyteller, then Tuscans often believe that the tribe doesn't deserve to exist at all. To detail the complete history of the Tuscan Raiders, we need to first start thousands of years before Star Wars, 25,793 years before the Battle of Yavin, or BBY, and 22,000 years before the Treaty of Coruscant and the events of the Old Republic. The history of the Sand People go back millennia to the time of the Rakata and the Kumumga, where Tatooine was a lush jungle planet. They were not Sand People, for there was no sand. The land was green with life, and they walked without wrappings. The Kumumga were the technologically advanced ancestors to the Sand People, capable of building giant metal structures and towers, even able to achieve space travel. The Sand People that we know, the ones that we see in the movies and in the games, believe that this was the beginning of the end for the Kumumga that building these structures was ultimately a harm to their society. Though the land was beautiful, they lived apart from the land. As soon as the Kumumga achieved space travel, they got the attention of what the same people call the Builders, or as we know them, the Rakata or the Infinite Empire from Knights of the Old Republic. The Rakata enslaved the Kumumga, destroyed their cities, and mined Tatooine for all of its precious resources. So, fair to say that first contact didn't go so hot for these guys. The Sand People believe that, of those enslaved, it was only those who had no respect for their land that were taken away by the Rakata. After some 500 years of enslavement and resource gathering by the Rakata, the Infinite Empire started a civil war and began to collapse. This wasn't helped by a deadly plague that began to spread through Rakatan society, nearly driving them to extinction. Sand People believe that the Rakatan's plague was caused by their own arrogance and disconnect from the land, and their use of technology. Though it was only a minor skirmish, the Kumumga struck a blow against the Rakatan Empire and were actually able to turn their own warships against them, destroying Rakatan starships. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, oh. And then the Rakata glassed the entire planet of Tatooine and turned it into one giant desert. Right. Soil became glass, grinding to sand. But the fight was long planned, and his people were safe. Deep in cave homes carved from valley wall. They were free. So the reason Sand People don't use more advanced technology is because they thought the Infinite Empire coming to Tatooine was their fault. In their minds, Tatooine being glassed was punishment for building starships. You can actually see in the Old Republic MMO an area of Tatooine called The Wound, where presumably the Rakatan laser that destroyed Tatooine hit. After hiding in caves, the Kumumga emerged and began what they call the Long Walk, a part of Tuscan history that spans over millennia. This is where Kumumga became the Sand People that we know today, adopting the connection to the Banthas, the Wrappings, and the Nomadic culture. In the Jedi Consular storyline in the Old Republic, there's an item called the Sand People Carving that you can read, explaining that the Kumumga may not have been the only living race on Tatooine. The carving says that four different species all lived on Tatooine at the same time. The first species died out when the Infinite Empire attacked, the second species became the Jawas, and the third species became the Sand People, who killed the fourth race during the period of the Long Walk. 
The Sand People had a brief encounter with Darth Revan in 3956 BBY, where he settled the dispute between their tribe and the galaxy-spanning company, Zerka Corporation. Depending on the player's alignment in the game, Revan could choose to kill the tribe of Sand People, or aid them peacefully by providing them with moisture evaporators in order to find the Rakatan star map. Jumping forward a couple thousand years, the Sand People raided a settlement called Fort Tusken, which you could visit in the game Star Wars Galaxies, and which was mentioned in Star Wars Kenobi. Fort Tusken was set up 100 years before the events of 1977's Star Wars, and was being constantly attacked by the Sand People until the fort was abandoned a mere five years later. I bring this up because, obviously, this is how Tusken Raiders got their name. In fact, you could probably consider the name Tusken Raider a derogatory term for Sand People. It would be like calling white people native killers. People can stop it. So calling Sand People Tuscans before the raid on Fort Tuscan is actually incorrect. WAY TO GO BIOWARE! Nothing of real significance happens in Tuscan history from then on. It's mostly just them attacking the main characters, which is pretty well documented by the canon. They can be seen shooting at pod racers during the Boonti Eve Classic, which is sort of like a tradition for them. They kidnap and probably torture Anakin's mom, and then Anakin gets revenge. A couple decades later, Anakin, now Darth Vader, hunts Tusken Raiders regularly. So much so that the Sand People actually began to revere Darth Vader as a demon of the desert, erecting a giant shrine in his honor and performing ritual sacrifices to ward him off. The Sand People attack Ezra Bridger from Rebels in his search for Obi-Wan Kenobi, and finally they attack Luke and get scared off by Obi-Wan's crate dragon yell, which you probably already know. And that's pretty much it for the history of the Tusken Raiders. There's some really cool specific Tusken Raiders, but I'll talk about them in future videos. That does it for this week's Lore and Legends. Let me know any questions you have, anything I missed, future topics you'd like to see, or any improvements you think I could make. This is kind of a trial run, so I appreciate you sticking with me to the end. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.